Now, it takes many billions of years to create a galaxy like the Milky Way galaxy with 100 billion stars, many billions of years old. But the James Webb telescope has identified six galaxies that exist half a billion years after the Big Bang that are up to 10 times bigger than the Milky Way galaxy. That shouldn't happen. What if the edge of the universe isn't at the end, but the beginning of something far more mysterious? The James Webb Space Telescope has just peered deeper than anything before it, capturing light from the dawn of time, revealing galaxies older than our models predicted. Michio Kaku calls it a window into creation itself. What Webb found isn't just ancient, it's strange, rewriting our cosmic timeline and hinting at forces we don't yet understand. Could this be evidence of primordial black holes or even signs of other universes? One thing is clear, the edge of the universe just got a whole lot closer, peering at the cosmic horizon. We begin our journey by focusing JWST on the edge of the observable universe, about 46.5 billion light years away. That edge isn't physical, it's defined by light travel time since the Big Bang. Telescopes can't see infinite space, we see only as far as light has had time to reach us. JWST's advanced infrared vision lets us observe that light, light that has traveled across the expanding universe for over 13 billion years. Right away, the telescope shattered previous records. Distant specks of light, once mere blurs to Hubble, now resolve into nearly 44 distant galaxies, some at redshifts above Z-13 meaning their light was emitted when the cosmos was under 300 million years old. As Michio Kaku remarked, we're looking back in time to the first galaxies that formed. That's not just a poetic line, it's literally what JWST is doing. This isn't just faint glow, it's fossil light, the actual imprints of the first stars switching on. Those early galaxies, these stellar nurseries, provide clues to cosmic infancy, and they're now within our grasp. JWST doesn't just detect them, it separates each galaxy from its neighbor, offering snapshots of early cosmic neighborhoods. What's more, this imagery is more than just a novelty. It's history written in light. With each photon JWST captures, we get a clearer look at the seeds that grew into galaxies like ours. As Kaku notes, we're not only seeing old light, we're seeing the genesis of cosmic structures, and that discovery rewrites everything. Next, we'll explore how JWST's record-breaking redshift findings are forcing a redefinition of cosmic timelines and star formation models. Our universe began its career earlier and faster than we ever thought. Breaking the redshift record. JWST has shifted the astronomical benchmark once more by finding galaxies at redshifts greater than Z equals 13 meaning they existed when the universe was younger than 300 million years. Previously, scientists expected only a handful of such ancient galaxies. Webb delivered close to 44 new candidates, all inactive since the cosmic dawn. These results make our previous timelines look slow and cautious. Think of it this way. Imagine finding fully formed church spires in a settlement believed to be only a few huts. It's like finding skyscrapers in a village that barely existed, Kaku marvels. These galaxies are more than blurry glimmers. They're the early urban centers of the cosmos, clear, well-defined, and unexpectedly advanced. Not only is Jack Basti revealing more galaxies, but the details, mass, brightness, star formation rates are all higher than predicted. Models based on cosmic inflation and dark matter assume slower growth. Instead, Webb shows an early universe that sprinted, not marched. Kaku warns, our models might need rewriting. These revelations demand swift attention. If galaxies form faster and earlier, key assumptions about dark matter behavior, gas cooling, and star formation efficiency have to be reviewed. That's not a small tweak. It suggests an entire era of cosmic acceleration we're just beginning to understand.
With Redshift records now upended, it's clear that these early galaxies aren't just numerous, they're structured. Let's move to how JWST images reveal internal architecture, disks, clumps, and filaments, helping us understand how galaxies first took shape. Galactic structures in miniature. Deep field JWST images don't just show points of light. They show galaxies with tiny structures, such as clumps, disks, and filaments, appearing when the universe was a baby, 200, 400 million years old. Even at these early times, matter had begun organizing itself into galactic architecture, not a random scatter of stars. We're seeing star-forming regions glowing inside these proto-galaxies, bright pockets lighting up like early solar systems. Kaku describes it vividly. We're seeing the first steps towards galaxies like our Milky Way. Those glow points are the embryos of stellar clusters, helping us trace galactic evolution from its infancy. Such structural insight is revolutionary. It tells us how these early systems rotate, grow, and interact with dark matter. Through them, researchers can measure mass, identify gas flows, and gauge the impact of starbirth, factors once thought only relevant billions of years later. Technically, it's stunning. Each image captures not only the galaxy's existence, but key morphological features. Nature's blueprint is right there, Kaku explains. These glimpses offer a window into the cosmic scaffolding from which everything, including our own galaxy, eventually grew. We've seen the structure. Now we turn to a monumental implication. These early galaxies are too big, too fast for our old models. That brings us to the next chapter, why standard cosmology is under fire. Challenges to standard cosmology. The James Webb Space Telescope didn't just open a window to the early universe, it threw open the entire door. What we found behind that door is both thrilling and troubling. Many of the bright ancient galaxies Webb has revealed seem too massive, too organized, and too luminous to fit comfortably within our most trusted models, like LCDM, or Lambda Cold Dark Matter Theory. This model, along the backbone of cosmology, describes how dark energy and dark matter shape the universe. But now it's showing cracks. The galaxies spotted at extreme redshifts, some less than 300 million years post-Big Bang, appear to have formed stars with remarkable speed and efficiency. That wasn't supposed to happen. According to standard theory, matter needed time to cool, condense, and ignite. But JWST's findings suggest otherwise. Kaku puts it plainly, it's as if the universe skipped adolescence. These galaxies matured at warp speed, hinting at new physics we don't yet understand. If galaxies form faster than our assumptions about early dark matter halos, the role of cosmic feedback, and the temperature of early gas clouds need rethinking. Some scientists now propose tweaks to inflation theory, while others are considering alternatives to dark matter behavior altogether. It's not that LCDM is broken, but it may be incomplete, a puzzle missing a few cosmic pieces. This is the kind of moment physicists live for. As Kaku notes, our models might need rewriting, not because they're wrong, but because the universe is more imaginative than we are. And imagination, when paired with observation, is the foundation of discovery. With cosmological rules now questioned, researchers are turning to even more exotic possibilities. Among them, black holes that form not from stars, but from the Big Bang itself. The next section dives into these ancient beasts. Hunting for primordial black holes. One of JWST's most unexpected clues comes from strange infrared excesses, faint but persistent glows that don't match young stars or typical galaxies. These might be the signatures of something far older and darker, primordial black holes forged in the chaos just after the Big Bang. These aren't your garden variety black holes. They may be smaller, more numerous, and born directly from cosmic inflation's density fluctuations. If real, these black holes could be the seeds from which galaxies grew. That flips the usual narrative. Normally we think galaxies form stars and black holes grow in their centers. But what if instead the black hole came first? If true, Kaku says, it changes our idea of what lights the cosmic dawn. 
These tiny monsters may have pulled in glow, sparked early starbursts, and shaped the skeleton of the cosmos itself. Moreover, primordial black holes could help explain dark matter, the elusive material that makes up most of the universe's mass, but doesn't emit or reflect light. Some scientists believe that these ancient black holes are dark matter, or at least part of it. If confirmed, that would solve one of physics' deepest mysteries with one elegant answer. Webb hasn't proven their existence yet, but the clues are stacking up. The spectral distortions, the gravitational lensing effects, the mismatched brightness, all hint at hidden giants lurking in ancient space. As Kaku warns, we may have mistaken shadows for stars. The question remains, what cleared the darkness? To understand how stars began to shine, we must examine a turning point in cosmic history, the Ryanization era. That's where we head next. Signs of Cosmic Ryanization At one point, the universe was dark, not metaphorically, but literally shrouded in hydrogen fog. After the Big Bang and a brief flash of primordial light, there came a long stretch, the cosmic dark ages, where no stars existed and light couldn't travel far. Then suddenly it all changed. Stars ignited, galaxies took shape, and the universe turned its lights on. The process is called cosmic reionization. And now, thanks to JWST, we're witnessing it happen in real time. What Webb sees are faint patterns called the Lyman Alpha Forest, shadows in the light spectrum of distant galaxies. These shadows reveal bubbles of ionized hydrogen, areas where starlight has blasted away the fog. By mapping these bubbles, scientists can track how ryanization spread across the cosmos, transforming the opaque early universe into the transparent one we see today. It's not just stunning, it's pivotal. Understanding reionization tells us how quickly the first stars formed, how galaxies evolved, and how early radiation changed the cosmos. We're watching the universe learn how to shine, says Kaku. It's like seeing the first campfires on a dark continent. These observations also refine estimates of the first luminous objects' lifespans, temperatures, and influence on nearby space. Some even suggest that supermassive stars, hundreds of times the sun's mass, burned briefly but ferociously, playing a key role in the reionization timeline. The light we now see carries encoded stories, tales of flame, shadow, and expansion. It's the universe's autobiography written in starlight, Kaku reflects, and within that light lies more than history. It may hold secrets of life itself. In our next chapter, we'll explore how James Webb is turning its gaze to alien worlds and what it might find at the edge of cosmic possibility. Aliens at the edge? At the edge of the observable universe, where time itself seems to stretch thin, we aren't just seeing galaxies. We're peeking into the potential cradles of alien life. The James Webb Space Telescope wasn't designed to find extraterrestrials, but what it can do is study the atmospheres of exoplanets, the places most likely to support life beyond Earth. Michio Kaku has called this moment in science a tipping point. He says, we may be on the verge of answering one of humanity's oldest questions. Are we alone? Webb's ability to analyze infrared spectra, the light filtered through a distant planet's atmosphere, lets us search for biosignatures. These include water vapor, methane, oxygen, ozone, and even complex molecules like phosphine, which may hint at biological activity. Already the telescope has examined planets like WASP-96b, revealing traces of water molecules, a breakthrough. While WASP-96b itself is too hot for life, this proves the telescope's power, and it's just getting started. Future observations will focus on smaller, rockier exoplanets in habitable zones, where liquid water might flow and atmospheres could support photosynthesis-like chemistry. Kaku stresses the philosophical weight of this work. Knowing the universe's beginning helps us understand life's place within it. If life exists out there, on a planet circling a dim red star 100 light years away, then it likely began around the same time life began here. That realization would reframe our story, not as Earth's alone, but as one thread in a cosmic tapestry of biology. We began by asking what lies at the edge of the universe. Now, after all we've uncovered through the lens of the James Webb Space Telescope, 
we're left with even bigger questions. Webb didn't just take clearer photos of faraway galaxies. It peeled back the curtain on time itself. It showed us that the early universe was more active, more structured, and more surprising than we ever imagined. From primordial galaxies forming stars at breakneck speeds to possible traces of black holes born at the beginning of time, Webb's findings shake the foundations of modern cosmology. The standard models, the ones we've relied on for decades, now seem incomplete. As Michio Kaku puts it, we're entering uncharted territory. The laws of physics as we know them may be just one chapter of a much larger story. But beyond the physics and the theories, there's something deeply human in this journey. We've always looked to the sky for meaning. Now with tools like Webb, we're not just seeing stars, we're seeing possibilities. Possibilities that there could be life on exoplanets or that other universes exist just beyond our reach. The edge isn't a wall, it's a bridge, one that connects science to philosophy, curiosity to discovery. Michio Kaku often says that science is the engine of prosperity and wonder. With every image sent back from Webb, we're not just expanding our understanding, we're expanding what it means to be human in a universe this vast. And perhaps that's the greatest discovery of all, that even in a cosmos filled with distant galaxies and dark energy, we're still capable of asking bold questions and dreaming even bolder answers. So as we continue this exploration, beyond the edge, beyond the light, and into the unknown, remember this, the universe isn't finished telling its story, and neither are we. Thank you for joining us on this deep cosmic journey. If the universe moved you today, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Because somewhere out there, light is still traveling toward us, and the next revelation might just be one image away.